Good morning, happy new year. My name is Glenn and welcome back to the Crypto Nest. This is going to be an exciting year this year. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys real quick about the top stories that shaped our crypto industry in 2019. I want to go over the announcement of our Libra coin, uh, China's president embracing blockchain and decentralized financing reaching all time highs, as well as the halving coming into the 2020. If any of this sounds exciting, please stick around to the end and I'm sure you're going to enjoy this video. So, the top stories here that shaped the crypto industry in 2019. 2019 was interesting. We started out at rather low uh, prices, actually. And we started out the year, if we go back and we look, we started the year out down here at around, oh, 3000 between 3000 and $4,000 here. Um, getting down as low uh, at this point here at about $3,342. We hit some pretty low points at the very beginning of 2019. As the year went on, things started to climb. As we'll go over later on, we got around the middle of the year here and some interesting things started happening and we kind of started seeing some sell off since then, uh, which is part of what we're going to talk about today. So as I was just showing you on the chart, sometime around June, we started hitting up some pretty higher levels. Uh, we started out around 3,000. We started working our way up here. And as you can see, up in June, we, we were starting to make our way up around, oh, up around $8,700, $8,800 or so. Right around that time, uh, and there was an announcement made by Facebook of something called the Libra coin. Facebook decided that they were going to uh, launch this new coin. Uh, it was going to be a digital asset backed by a number of different global fiat currencies and commodities. They brought on people like Uber, PayPal, MasterCard, Visa, Coinbase, eBay, all in a big bid to provide a digital bank to the 2.1 billion unbanked people across the world. Essentially, they wanted to become a central bank. They were going to take different debts from different countries from around the world, put them all into this gigantic basket, and try to uh, put the value and try to tie the value of that Libra coin to this basket of all these different uh, all these different global debts. Of course that raised a whole lot of interest uh, by the different regulatory entities not just here in the United States but around the world and it started a whirlwind. I don't know that we necessarily needed it at the same time you know it was good in the way that it brought a lot of light to the cryptocurrency world Unfortunately, the light that it brought was not the positive light that we were hoping for. They say any uh, any publicity is good publicity, so I guess in the end of the day, it'll be okay, uh, and it'll all balance itself out. But Facebook and LibraCoin really came in and, and created a, some major ripples. It was not met well. Uh, as I said, the governments didn't like it much. They had a lot of feedback, a lot of different negative stances by lawmakers. Uh, a bunch of countries, France and Germany, came forward condemning the coin. It just, it, they were saying that it was a breach of monetary policy set out by their central banks. Uh, Bitcoin was set up, uh, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin were set up to challenge the banks. Of course, anytime that the bank actually gets challenged, it's going to fight back. It's kind of left Bitcoin alone because there's no real one entity. Uh, and although it's gained a lot of mass adoption, it was never really a threat to take the banks out at this stance at this point in time mark zuckerberg facebook and the libra uh, the libra coin the libra association they straight up slapped the governments in the face and said no nah, you know the central banks in the face and said no nah, you know what we want to play in your sandbox and they didn't like that very much uh, the future in 2020 looks very bleak given the regulatory troubles but i do believe Libra will probably launch. It may even end up being successful in the end. They've made a bunch of changes to it. They're having to make a bunch of changes to it. At the same time, uh, PayPal, MasterCard, Visa, they all chose to leave the organization. There were several others that were planning on leaving. Uh, Stripe and eBay, they left. There's a bunch more that were supposed to be leaving. So Libra coin ran into some real trouble and I don't know how much further it's gonna go. We're just gonna have to watch and see how that pans out into 2020. Uh, of course, we had the China, the Chinese president, uh, 
I always butcher this guy's name. I am so sorry. Jinping Xi. Uh, and what's now known as the Xi Pump, China's President Jinping Xi called on his country to embrace blockchain technologies, a move that caused a Bitcoin pump from 7,000 region to pass 10,000 in a day. Uh, at one point, the uh, president of China had come out and said, yes, you know, we, we really want to embrace blockchain. We want to become the, the forefront of blockchain. They set out to start their own digital currency. Uh, therefore, you know, being a country like China, they're not going to want anybody to have any kind of private control over anything. They want all the control for the government. So they're going to create their own government digital currency for people to use. Uh, set forth by the People's Bank of China and therefore they feel that people won't need other currencies and this way they'll be able to track and keep control of everything and see what everybody's doing. I mean if you think about it, a blockchain is totally immutable, it's totally uh, uh, transparent, it's totally transparent. However, if it's set up by a government being that it is immutable and is also transparent, gives the government free roam to see everything that anybody spends their money on. In a totalitarian government regime such as China, uh, you can see where something like that would be definitely uh, useful for them. We have decentralized finance. Now you guys hear me here talk about decentralized finance all the time and decentralized finance in 2019 was reaching its all time highs. Now it is a new industry or a new part of the industry, so of course, uh, it's going to be hitting all-time highs as it begins to grow, but I thought this was pretty exciting, especially considered that you know everything I've done with my channel so far has been based around setting up decentralized financing uh, and teaching people and educating people on decentralized financing. Decentralized finance, properly no, uh, popularly referred to as DeFi, the industry grew to pro proportions few crypto analysts thought would be possible. Uh, they've recorded $682 million in November of 2018. On November 28th of 2019, representing a 150% increase in the past 12 months, and the industry shows no sign of slowing down in 2020. And I believe that. I mean, that's what my channel is all about: is edu educating people and use decentralized finance for themselves. Uh, Binance, one of the biggest exchanges out there, they had an exchange here in the United States. They had to pull their exchange here in the United States due to SEC regulatory oversight. They had to pull their exchange from the from here in the United States, close it off to the people in the United States, and then therefore then opened another exchange called Binance US. There's a link in the description. Uh, if anybody's interested, you can sign up there. It gives you a discount on your trading fees. And it is a exchange that is now set up to where people in the United States can use that. The coins have been vetted to a point where the SEC shouldn't give anybody any trouble for the tokens they're trying to trade on the exchange. They have a token called Binance Coin. Binance Coin is their native token within their exchange, uh, within their platform. When you hold Binance Token and you pay your trading fees in, uh, with Binance Token, you actually get a discount on your trading fees by using their coin. Uh, it was actually a really good investment during 2019. I remember looking at it at the beginning of the year and thinking, you know, I should buy some of that just because at the time it seemed like a good idea. There was a lot of news, a lot of things going on. I thought, you know, maybe I should grab some of it. I didn't. I missed the boat here uh, as it did go up to a high, an all-time high of about $39.80 in June, which is... <laughs> considerably higher than where it started out. If I remember correctly, the first time I looked at start, uh, wanting to buy it, it was around two or three dollars. It would have been a nice investment, but you know, you can't win them all. So Binance Coin is one that you may want to look into. Again, this is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. Uh, Binance Coin, please do your own research. You never buy anything because some guy on the internet or on YouTube told you to, okay? Do your own research, but Binance Coin is definitely something that if you're interested and curious about, I would do some research into and see if it fits your needs, uh, something that you would be interested in. The crypto exchange hacks in 2019 were incredible. Of course, in 2019, we had close to 500 million US dollars of investors' hard-earned money that's been stolen in hacks or scams, continuing a sad trend in the industry. Binance and Upbit have faced a combined 100 million in value stolen in cryptocurrencies. Guys, 
it just goes back to what I've said over and over again. You hear me say it all the time, not your keys, not your crypto. Make sure that, you know, if you're not trading, you take your coins off the exchange, put them somewhere, lock them up on a ledger or some other form of hardware wallet or somewhere secure where it's offline and people can't hack them. Uh, if you need a, a ledger or something like that, there's also a link in the description. Please feel free to use it. Um, it does support the channel. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, we have the Bitcoin having coming up in 2020. Sometime around April, uh, the mining rewards of, of all the miners are going to be cut in half. This generally tends to lead in an uptrend in price. Uh, at least it has the last two times. This year, they're saying it may be different. Uh, the market is a much different place than it was before. We have the large investors, the large uh, corporations that have come in, uh, places like Fidelity and so on that have started investing. The New York Stock Exchange backed. These things have all come in and started to trade. It's going to affect the price a lot differently than it did the first two halvings, so I'm not really sure what to expect this time around. I do expect to see an increase in price. I hope I'm right. Of course, you know, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, uh, but I am looking forward to nice gains coming into 2020. Those of us that have been holding on to Bitcoin for a long time, I do believe are going to end up in a pretty good situation, feeling pretty happy about the fact that they've been holding on to their, to their Bitcoin. Uh, just my opinion, and that's the way I see it. We have had a favorable 2019 in the crypto industry. Um, of course, the market and the industry is going to feel rather satisfied with the general development and investments made. Bitcoin's risen over 90% in this past year. Ethereum successfully completed two different forks. Litecoin has appreciated over 100% in anticipation of its having. Now, this is the thing. It says here, in anticipation of its having. After it's having, it dropped right back down, and Litecoin is trading at right around $42, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't looked at it yet this morning. Uh, I probably should have, but uh, it went from it went up to over over $100 and back down again to $40. So, yes, it did appreciate over 100% in anticipation of its having. It has come right back down again afterwards. Uh, governments such as China, Russia, India are announcing plans to launch a national digital currency. And we, of course, as we talked about, had the announcement of LibraCoin. Don't really know where that's going to go. I do believe that we are looking for some good things to happen in the future here for going into 2020. Over here, uh, we have Blockonomy talking about the, the top stories of crypto and blockchain of 2019. Uh, over here, they have a lot of the same stories, but this one I thought was rather interesting. This one's different. Uh, it talks about JP Morgan, one of the largest financial institutions whose chief executive branded Bitcoin as a scam on its way out the door in 2017, launched, launched its own digital asset in 2019. There were stories of, from uh, JP Morgan coming out saying that, you know, Jamie Dimon, uh, it was all over the place that he would fire anybody that was involved in Bitcoin, that he, he didn't want anything to do with it. He thought it was bad. And then we had stories come out during 2019 of JP Morgan uh, actually mining Bitcoin in some of their back rooms. So I thought that was kind of interesting. The bank and investment firm unveiled the JP Morgan coin at the start of the year, revealing that his digital money would be based on Quorum, a private version of Ethereum stack. So... They are using it for a small portion of their transactions. Uh, I do believe they will probably start using it more and more and eventually probably try to expand it further out. At the moment, it's just a, a coin that they're using privately within their own corporation uh, to transfer money back and forth between branches. Um, we talked about Libra already. I don't want to get into any more of that. I don't want to give it any more airtime. I'm not a big fan of Libra personally. It's just me. Here we have China embracing blockchain, but not really Bitcoin. As we talked about before, the Chinese president accepted, is really accepting blockchain, but he's not so big on Bitcoin itself. So although we do, we will see the Chinese government and so on moving forward with their plans on putting together a, a government digital currency, we probably won't see much support for Bitcoin over there. Their financial regulators in regions like Beijing and Shanghai are doubling down on their anti-crypto stances. Uh, so it doesn't look good for Bitcoin itself necessarily in China, although, mind you, um, more than 50% of the mining that's done, if I'm not mistaken, in the world is done in China. So there is that. 
we have institutions delving into Bitcoin. We talked about this briefly a moment ago. We've got Fidelity Investments here, the Wall Street financial services giant with over $2 trillion under management, which unveiled the Fidelity Digital Assets Division in 2018, began to roll out a Bitcoin custody and trade execution in 2019. Uh, also this year, we had backed uh, the cryptocurrency exchange backed by Microsoft, Starbucks, and the International Continental Exchange. Uh, it rolled out its Bitcoin futures contracts in September. It started out really slow. Nobody really knew if it was going to get any traction. Since then, it has gained some pretty good traction and is doing much better now. You know, due to the confluence of the aforementioned stories, some of the world's most important people found the word Bitcoin and cryptocurrency escaping their lips, thrusting the industry back into the mainstream spotlight, at least temporarily. You know, when you have uh, celebrities and big people uh, in, in the media that start talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, of course, it drives a lot of attention there. So we have in February, we had Elon Musk, which is the co-founder of PayPal, chief executive of SpaceX and Tesla. Uh, founder of the Boring Company, among other titles, took to the FYI podcast of ARK Invest, a Wall Street research heavily interested in investments like Bitcoin and Tesla. And after discussing Tesla's most recent advancements, the host of the podcast took a brief aside. They asked Musk about his thoughts on Bitcoin. Many were surprised that he shared an excitement for the technology. Uh, he thinks it's quite brilliant. He thinks that Ethereum and maybe some of the others might have technological merit. The renowned technologist concluded by stating he thinks without a doubt that crypto is far better way to transfer value than pieces of paper. And well, who can argue with that? I mean, I, I, I agree personally. But Elon Musk isn't the only one that's, you know, uh, liking the technology. Of course, we have Jack Dorsey here, the head of both Twitter and the fintech company Square. Uh, Dorsey said on the Joe Rogan podcast that he thinks Bitcoin is soon going to become a native currency of the Internet, uh, adding in the Square earnings call that he loves Bitcoin. Dorsey was immediately championed by the cryptocurrency community as the individual who will bring this asset mainstream permanently. Uh, of course, we've got the famous tweets from Donald Trump. He's always in the news, always tweeting something out. He started to talk about Bitcoin a couple of times uh, in July, which, of course, this is one of the backlashes that I personally believe came due to Libra stepping in where it did. Uh, I think that the government had to take a stance since Libra was stepping up and trying to become a central bank and trying to step on everybody's toes and trying to uh, take over and get too much control. I think the government's had to kind of slap everybody back down. They, they don't want to give up control of the dollar, okay? They don't want the dollar to lose any more value than it already has. So therefore, they don't want any competition. And if we have a, someone like Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook trying to take over and run the Libra coin, um, of course, that's going to run into government issues that they don't want. So Trump, in a way, has forced to have to say certain things, I would, in my personal opinion. Uh, he came out and stated that he's not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. They're not money. He says their value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Uh, of course, I don't believe in that. I, I don't. I don't agree with him on that. Um, although I do understand his reasonings for having to say things like that. Uh, he backed his comment by looking at the fact and the sentiment that the digital assets can be used to facilitate unlawful behavior, which is the same thing that they parrot through the media all the time: uh, unlawful behavior, uh, human trafficking, drug trafficking. Uh, just the same old garbage, money laundering, the same thing we hear all the time. And of course, well, you can't have somebody, you know, championing for any of that. So they have to use that in the media to kind of stop people from, to stop people and make them think. Um, and it works. I mean, it worked for me. If I wouldn't have been listening to the media back in 2013, I might have made a different investment and be in a much different situation than I am now. Instead, you know, I didn't. And here I am. And well, now that's why I'm out here educating all of you. That's why I'm here. I'm here for all of you every day. And I do appreciate everything that you all uh, do. I appreciate you being here every day. appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos. Uh, I thank you very much for being here today. I hope everyone has a great new year. Uh, got some exciting things coming forward. Uh, you know, one thing I do want to tell you all is to make sure you protect yourselves. Um, the market, I do believe, is going to see some uh, some changes coming forward in this next year. 
with the stories we talked about earlier, I showed you this chart here starting out down at the 3000 level. We got up here around June, around oh, 8500, 8600, uh, at which point we had something called the plus token scam come out. And they were started dumping Bitcoin on the market at about 1300 Bitcoins a day. Now, these guys were responsible for stealing uh, some, what is it here, 200,000 Bitcoin, 800,000 ETH from victims. Uh, if I remember right, the number came up to be somewhere around three, $3 billion. They started, uh, this was around June. Of course, when you have something like, you know, a large amount of something like that, you're going to want to do everything you can to get as much money out of it as you can, especially if you've taken the time to spend that kind of time and money uh, to accumulate those kind of wealth. So as you can see from June, the price just continued to climb. It got up here around 13,000, and when it finally hit the top up here, this was right about oh, right June, mid-June, okay, when it hit the top. We got up right around 13.5, at which point they started dumping their tokens. And they started dumping their tokens at a rate of about 1300 a day on the market. This is one of the largest Ponzi schemes that ever in the history of Bitcoin to this day. Uh, huge scam. Uh, it's pretty much over at this point for the most part as far as the Bitcoin goes uh, from what they've been able to determine. However, there is a large amount of Ethereum still out there that uh, will most likely get dumped next. So those of you that are investing in Ethereum, watch out, be careful, make sure you do your own research, make sure you know what you, what you're, where you're putting your money, what you're putting your money into. Uh, Ethereum is a good thing, uh, but they do have a whole lot of it that they could be dumping next. Um, maybe it's already happened. There's been a pretty big downturn in Bitcoin and Ethereum. As you can see from June at the top, once they started selling off their $1,300 a day, you can see Bitcoin has been on a slow down slide ever since. Uh, it's starting to level off now. We may be finding some kind of a bottom here. There's a chance we could go a little bit lower. Uh, there's always a chance of going lower. Uh, however, I do believe that over the next couple of months, we're going to start see it start to recover and start to work its way back up again. Again, not financial advice, just my opinion. Don't buy anything because some guy on YouTube told you to. Please do your own research. I am not a financial advisor. Thank you very much for being here today. I do appreciate your time. I hope you all have found this entertaining. I hope you found it informative. Uh, I look forward to being here in the future uh, and seeing you more every day. Uh, take a moment and subscribe for me if you would. Click the little uh, bell notification so you can be notified when new videos are released. I'm going to get more active and do my best to try to do a video for you guys uh, as, uh, every time I can, every day possible. So if all goes well, I'll be, you'll be seeing my face every day. Um, I hope you like the new intro. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, thanks for now. Bye-bye.